Hi, this is Scott from Heretical Srafa here. I've, uh, I've gotten a, some responses from some people all over the world. Uh, I want to thank everybody for that who's responded in a positive way. We've been getting responses from, uh, from famous scholars, uh, not so famous scholars, regular people, uh, uh, Srafa scholars that have published on Srafa, as well as people that are interested in Srafa for the first time, and people that have been interested in Srava for over 30 years. Uh, people are all uh, uh, very supportive that I've gotten, and I really wanted to appreciate that. I think that it is, uh, that, that it's important that, um, that we understand exactly what's going on here. And that's what I wanted to speak a little bit about in this video blog, um, and talk about the nature of what's happening in this particular endeavor. We have, and I want to be very clear, and some people are understanding what's happening here. We have before us, in real time, we are about to have the unveiling of all of Srafa's archival material. It's all going to come before us. It's not going to come, it's going to come before us as you would find it in the rent. Even, even better than you would find it in the rent. Because in the Wren library, you couldn't see them electronically. When you went to the Wren library, which is, of course, where the material is held, you would go to the reader table, and you would have to fetch. You have a fetching slip. And these are the, uh, I have a copy of a fetching slip. And then you would take a fetching slip, and you would fill out where you want, what archival you want, put your reader's name on there, and then they would bring that to you, one file at a time. Maybe you're lucky, you can maybe get two or three files at a time. But it was really difficult to be able to peruse the entirety of the material. Now, for the first time, we're able to do that. So even though I've been going to the archive for 10 years, you know, I spent weeks at the archive, months at the archive over the last 10 years, engaged in a lot of transcriptions. I'll talk about that uh, uh, in a minute. But even though I've been going to the archive for all those years and studying intently those papers, the fact of the matter is, given the, the, the difficult logistic nature of studying the material at the Wren, I've only looked at, a, at, at really a small part of that, uh, of that archival material. And the same goes for most Rafa scholars, and that's an important point to be known. That for the first time, I'm seeing the diaries, for example. For the first time, we're going to be seeing all the material that's going to be coming out on Section D. And for the first time, scholars are going to be able to peruse it in a friendly manner. I and mean, this is the first time that's happening for anybody, me, you, everybody. This is the first time. And I think that's the point that we have to, we, we have to celebrate. We have to be very, uh, very clear about the, the, um, the advancement that we have done. I think that as the papers come out, that, uh, that, that scholars and lay people and interested people in this material would be well served to read the material for themselves before they start reading interpretations of the material by people and scholars who tell us what Srafa really meant. And, 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 I, and I include myself in that. Some of the work that I had done prior to, to 2013 was written in that vein of, well, this is what Srafa really meant. And, and I've now come, uh, 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 become a lot more mature, I think, a lot less sophomoric, and no longer am I concerned with what Srafa really meant. The, to be honest with you, I don't think that's all that relevant, what he really meant, nor do I think it's all that interesting, what he really meant. I think what's much more interesting is what he really wrote. <laughs> and I think that what we can understand is what we can get from what Srafa really wrote, we can begin to understand and try to develop our science in ways that it needs to be developed. I'm, I think that we can all agree, well, I don't know if we all agree, certainly it's my opinion, that economics has failed society. Economics as a discipline is supposed to be ostensibly supposed to be a practical science. We're supposed to be concerned with the manner in which actual capitalist economies actually exist, not the way in which we would want it to exist, not the way in which we propose it to exist, not the way in which we assert that it exists, and, and to the point where we exclude people who don't believe in our assertions from being published, et cetera, et cetera. The dysfunction that's associated with academic economics is just extreme. I'm not, the, I'm not making it up that, uh, that we've got some serious problems in their discipline. And, and, and I think that, in my opinion, most academic economists, be they, uh, be they orthodox or heterodox, should fundamentally humble themselves, I think. No economist knows really what they're doing. I, I think that we should be a lot more humble as a discipline and say, you know what, we failed. You know what, we need to really look inwardly in terms of what our discipline is. 
but instead we have arrogance after arrogance on top of arrogance by both heterodox and orthodox scholars. And it's just really untenable. And that's probably the one thing I want to say to young faculty, to junior faculty, to students, and to any old faculty and old professors who may want to change. And that's for us to, to ab abandon the arrogance, abandon the me, 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 or as they say in Spanish, the yo, yo, yo culture, where look at me, look at my theory, look what I'm doing, look at me, I'm going to tell you what's rough or really meant. I'm going to tell you what Srafa really thought. It's just ridiculous. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And, and I think that, that we've had enough. And, and there has to be someone has to say enough, okay? So let's be that someone to say enough. You can articulate your theories, you can articulate your ideas, but you do not have the right to tell us that is the truth with a capital T. Whether you're orthodox, whether you're heterodox, it doesn't matter enough. Okay, enough of this. We need to move forward in society. The world is falling apart. Economics is a joke in terms of how it's being ridiculed by many, many of the other sciences out there. And we need to own that and not be so arrogant as to thinking that, well, number one, we know everything that's going on. And number two, only we got the answers. That's really Donald Trump-like. And I think that it's absolutely inappropriate for academic economics to do that anymore. And with this, we now, we, we, and with this, we can, we now have Sarafta's papers from which we can begin to, um, we can begin to articulate a different vision. And, and, and that's what I wanted to, uh, and that's what I wanted to, to say to you now. So what we have going before us is we have Sarafta's papers are going to be thrown out to the world. We're going to see it all before our eyes. It's going to be unfiltered. We're not going to have people telling us how to think about it or, or what Sarafta's really thinking about these matters. We're going to be able to see the archive as a holistic text, okay? We're going to see it as, a, as an entire uh, a body of work, good or bad, okay? Interpret interpretationally cogent or not, or whether it uh, Sarafa's interpretations will, will cotton or agree with anyone else's particular interpretations or not. I, I'm not concerned how much Sarafa's works are going to uh, be in line with the Sarafians or the Marxists or the post Keynesians or anybody. It really, it, we have to read what's in Srafa's works first. It's what Srafa really wrote. That's what's important. What he wrote, how we can understand it, because Srafa tells us in his book that it's only a prelude. It's a prelude to a critique of economic theory, and it's really important that we understand that and we take it forward. Now, so I won't tell you what Srafa really meant. I'll never say that, and if I do, then reject it, okay? Don't listen to me any more than you listen to anyone else, quite frankly, okay? Question what I have to say, just like you should question what everybody else says and read the material for itself. However, what I do have is a fundamental understanding of Srafa's papers in its holistic, in its holistic uh, framework, if you will. Specifically, the, 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 uh, the notes on Srafa's book, Production of Commodities, which are archived according to the, uh, the, trend, the Wren Trinity Convention as D312. Indeed. What, what, so let's be clear about what's happening here. We're about to have thrown out on the website, on the Trinity website, all of Srafa's archival material, okay? Beginning with section D. We've seen this section D contains three parts. Section D1, which are his notes. Here's some, uh, 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 some, some, uh, notes from section D1. This is gonna D191. It's gonna be the digital images of, uh, of Srafa's, of Srafa's black notebook. That's gonna be D1. Then there's going to be D2. D2 are going to be Srafa's lecture. I have a, a bootleg copy of Srafa's lecture notes on the advanced theory of value. That's D24. These are, uh, these are the black and white photocopies. These are not my images. These are the black and white photocopies that were made in the 1980s before the Trinity arrangement came. And then you got D3, where D3s are going to be the publications. Now, there's several stuff in D3. This is going to be D39. This is D39. This, again, comes from the black and white photocopies. I was able to get a bootleg copy of this a couple of years ago, uh, a bootleg copy of this. So this is D39. These are Srafa's notes on Hayek. And the, and, and the uh, book review that Srafa did for Hayek is going to be D39. 
Then you have D312. D312 are going to be Swarovski's notes on production of commodities. Now, D312 are going to be the notes that I have the complete digital images of. It was in February 2013 that Lord Eatwell, Swarovski's literary executor, gave, granted me permission, at that time the only exclusive permission, to digitally image all of D312. And for five weeks, I did click, 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 and I was able to take individual images of all the material in D312. And since that time, I've been coming home and I've been studying it. Okay, I've been looking at the material. I've been trying to uh, get uh, to understand the content and the arrangement of this material in D312. I have transcribed a lot of that material. I'll talk about the transcriptions because someone asked me earlier about the nature of uh, uh, of transcriptions. And so with the, uh, the, this material in my possession, for the first time, I could begin to see the forest for the trees, right? You could begin to see that, wow, Sraffa's archival material is a complete organic text, okay? It's a complete organic text, and it needs to be understood as such. We need to see where Sraffa is going and what Sraffa is doing in that. And so for 10 years before, well, I'd say for eight years, from 2005 until 2013, before Eatwell, Lord Eatwell gave me the permission to, uh, to image the, 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 the material in D312, I would go over to the Wren Library and I would just transcribe. That was the nature of archival scholarship at the time. You go to the Wren, you can't photocopy it, you can't take an image of it, all you can do is transcribe. Like I said, I was a monk. And so what I did for several weeks at a time is I would go over there and I would transcribe the material. Now this is an important point because uh, one of the one of our uh, 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 followers on our blog, his name is Alex. You can read the comment in the uh, on the Heretical Sarafa website. He had made a simple question of: are, are, Is there an effort to transcribe the material? And the answer is yes. There is an answer to transcribe the material. Now this is an important point. What we need to do is we need to transcribe all the material in Sarafa's notes. What I have in D312 is about 500 pages of transcribed material. It's in a Word document. The beautiful thing about transcriptions is that you can do in-text searching. Now, in-text searches is important because now you can just search a term, capital, reduction, whatever you want, and then you're going to be able to return all of the different areas and the different uh, documents that have that in it. Now that's an important point because what we have to do is we have to get this material ready for proper scholarly study. It, 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 even though it's been 30 years since Sraffa died and this material has ostensibly been, I, I don't know, but the fact of the matter remains is that it's not been properly broken down. It's not been properly rendered conducive for scientific study where individuals can go in and then begin to study the content of the material without having to reconstruct all all of the um, all of the uh, uh, the conditions and and the arrangements, etc., from which uh, from, from which Rafa wrote. So if you if you take D three twelve, there's there's 115 file folders. You hear me say a lot about 7,000 uh, 7, pages. Really, it's more like 5,000 mostly handwritten pages. The last 2,000 pages are going to be a lot of galley proofs and a lot of other su uh, uh, stuff that happened after Srafa did his typeset and after they had set the printing the, for the printer, etc. And so, really, the handwritten portion of the archive ends around D3102. And D3102, from D31 to D3102, that contains around 5,000 mostly handwritten pages. And what I have is about 500 pages of a transcribed. So, I've got a about 10% of the archive transcribed. And, uh, and one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be transcribing the rest of it. So to answer Alex's question and anyone else that's out there that may want to do it, yes, we need to transcribe it. Yes, start at it. Start transcribing. Let me know what you're transcribing. I'll let you know what I have transcribed. Mine is only in D312 and D191, okay? I haven't transcribed much more other than that, but what you transcribe, let me know. There are particular uh, guidelines that I think we should adhere to. I'll put that on the website so that everybody can see it. And the idea here is for us to be able to transcribe the material so that we can have in-text searching so that we can begin to construct what I see as the index, or what we're going to see as the index that's necessary for us to understand Sraffa's archival material. 
Now, the index that I envision is an index that has, as the gold standard, the manner in which Srafa indexed Ricardo. And I think that's really important to look at volume 11 of the works and correspondence of Ricardo and to see, yes, what Srafa did for Ricardo, we need to do for him. He deserves no less treatment than, than he gave Ricardo. And that's where we're going to be going with this. We need to transcribe the material. We need to be able to have a proper indexing relation, uh, indexing schema so that people can start uh, putting in where the in, where, where terms are in the archive and letting us all know so that we can compile that. I also envision a wiki Srafa archive where we can have uh, a, a different people from all over the world coming in and collaborating. You're seeing the way in which I'm able to hyperlink and interface the, uh, the, the, uh, the electronic material on the blog post. There's going to be a lot more of that. Uh, our guest blog had that. We had our first guest blog with, uh, with Andres Lazzarini and Gabriel Brodino. There's going to be more of that. The sky's the limit, guys. We're here to understand how Srafa wrote his, his, his uh, material, how Srafa did his theory, and how we can understand it. We're not here to tell you what Srafa meant. We're not here to tell you what Srafa, uh, what Srafa thought. We're, we don't engage in any of this alchemy, alchemy anymore. And I think this is a brilliant thing that's happened with Srafa scholarship. You won't need me or any of the other Srafa scholars out there telling you what Srafa meant. You can figure it out for yourself. To liberate Srafa, as the sign behind me says, as free Srafa, it's time that we did that. <clears throat> now, in looking at these transcriptions, I think I spent a lot of time thinking about the way in which this is uh, the, the we can make this uh, we can make this uh, uh, available for everybody. And the way in which I think the best way to think about the transcription is going to be the following way. This is a copy of the transcriptions of the Mallorca draft, of the image and the transcription. The long story short here is what we need to do is we need to put up there on a tandem screen the photograph and these are my photographs this is the one of this is this is the Mallorca draft it's 30 it's 31 pages it's Rafa's handwritten notes he wrote it on the island of Mallorca in January 1955 I will put this on the website as soon as I can uh, as soon as D31252 which is what the archive which with the Mallorca draft as soon as it's up I'm going to get this out to you and what we have here is the image and then the complete transcription and I had this for for I'd say about 10 percent of the material in D312. Now the beautiful thing about this, again, is that you can in-text search it, and when you in-text search it, you're able to return the page as well as the original transcription. I mean, I'm sorry, as well as the original image, and there's your transcription. And because you have the image next to the transcription, guess what? We can make sure that the transcriptions are not erroneous. That's not an, and that's not a, uh, a small point here, okay? Because one of the things that we have to do, and I'm going to write about this on our blog, is we have to go through and correct all the extant secondary literature that has incorrections in the transcriptions and yes there are errors in transcriptions in the secondary literature now and that's important we need to ensure that what is in the published account of the archive is in fact what's in Srafa's archive now this quality control has not yet been possible due to the sequestered nature of the archive well thankfully we are now in a position where we can open that up we can regain Srafa archival scholarship in the in in the name of science it's, it, there's nothing more unscientific than to have a, a an evidentiary data source that nobody's able to consult, right? It doesn't matter what I say about Srafa. If nobody can read the archive, I might as well be making it up. And that goes for any Srafa scholar. That's the motivation behind a lot of what I'm doing. I, indeed, I'll talk more about that in, in, in future blog posts. So that's where we're going with this, okay? I, I, I think that one of the things that we have to be clear about is A, the, the, the archives coming out before for all to see. It's all going to be out there. Nobody's going to have an upper hand on anyone else here. And everybody's going to be able to read what Srapa said and how he said it. Not what he thought. We're going to read what he went. That's A. B, we're also going to be able to see that the nature of our inquiry is to, in our endeavor, is to make sure that all of the material is going to be transcribed so that we can put right next to it the image as well as the transcription so that C, we can no longer, uh, we no longer will have to be subject to, uh, uh, to, to scholarship, which is in a large way unscientific because it cannot be validated. It cannot be double 
double checked and you're basically being told how to think about a particular matter. Can you say Dead Sea Scrolls here? No, thank you. Srapa Archival Scholarship is alive. Srapa's theory is alive, guys. We have brought it back to life. It's alive for you. It's alive for me. It's alive for la gente, for the people to read it and to understand it because economic theory has some serious issues that it's got to deal with. And the only way, in my humble opinion, and again, don't take my word for it. Let's see what's out there. The only way in which, in my opinion, we're going to be able to move beyond the quagmire that we have with respect to the doldrums in economic theory is through Srapa. We all have to go through Srapa and we have to render an account of what he did. Not as a branch of the heterodoxy, but rather as a clarion call for our science. We have to demand scientific rigor, scientific accountability, and we have to begin to demand it now. And that's what we get with Srapa's papers being open. Okay? So, I like this video blogging. Um, I see it's a 20 minute uh, video here. I'm gonna continue with the bl video blogging as is necessary. I'm gonna start putting stuff on our website now. We're gonna start having our website in a manner that's gonna be a lot more friendly in the next couple of months, etc. And stay tuned for it. This is for you, it's for me, it's for all of us to be able to understand and appreciate and take this forward. Okay, that's it. We'll see you next time online. Peace.